Welcome to our podcast, Charting the Course, presented by Emmanuel Church Apostolic Community. Our podcast will be presented by gifted teachers that are called, anointed, and appointed to expound upon the Word of God. We will be discussing various topics that are relevant to living a holy life today according to the Word. Welcome to another episode of Charting the Course podcast. I'm Kim Charlotte and I'm here with Nicole Austin. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. So we are here again today. We're going to be talking about stress and anxiety in the church. Tell us about this series. Yeah, with this series, um, we are, we're working on mental health. But for this particular one, we want to talk about stress and anxiety, especially in the church. Um, sometimes it's not expected of us, but it does happen. And we do need to learn how to cope with it. What are our expectations? How do we deal with it? How do we grow from it? How do we learn from it? Um, I do want to start off with the actual example of the stress. Okay. Um, so stress is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. Um, that's pretty simple. That could be just something like, you know, having multiple tasks at your job and just trying to navigate them throughout your day, but it's not something that's going to disrupt your life. And then you have anxiety, which is kind of like stress, but it's more so like prolonged stress, um, assessing over, um, thoughts, um, you know, it could be, you're just paranoid about something. It could be real in your mind. Um, and you can, and, but there's also like the mental health one, which is also having excessive thoughts. Um, you believe it to be real or perceived okay. threats in your life. You know, it keep you up. It just messes with your everyday life. So that was a definition for both of those. Um, yeah. So, okay. Well, we're talking about stress and anxiety in, in church. Mm -hmm. So if we want to think about just, um, I guess, church members, church goers, um, believers in Christ Jesus, is something wrong with, with, with us if we feel like we can't manage our stress or maybe we're somebody who struggles with anxiety? I don't think there's anything wrong with anybody who struggles with stress or anxiety. I do think there are certain manners in which you have to, uh, you know, go through in order to learn how to manage your stress and also reduce anxiety. Because often like if we were to speak biblical, Honestly, when it comes to anxiety, I truly heart, I wholeheartedly believe sometimes it comes from the lack of trust sometimes um, because, you know, God said he doesn't give us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time anxiety is literally fear. And as you see, when I read the definition, it said something you believe to be real or perceived threats. OK, so you are ready to offer it. That's like fear. So when we know God is telling us that he didn't give us the spirit of fear, it's like, yes, that's easily said than mm -hmm, done. Mm -hmm. How do you maneuver through your anxiety? And I speak from personal experience. I've had that anxiety about several things or just generalized anxiety in general. And sometimes it's difficult to manage. But I noticed that I wasn't managing them well when I was not following the direction that was given to me when I didn't put in the work, okay. you know, you know, cause they say faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So when somebody gives you direction, it's better for you to just follow through a direction, regardless of if it doesn't necessarily feel good. But over time, if you do the things that are supposed to help you do better and be better, it increases your faith. It increases your trust. It increases your discipline. Um, and sometimes, and then you'll learn that you don't have to fear certain things because you trust that whatever that process is, is going to be effective because I don't care if you sit with a therapist, a lot of times they're going to tell you, they are going to tell you to face some of some fears okay. and then some things they may tell you to avoid, um, because it could possibly make things worse. And God does the same thing with us. He'll tell you, okay, you need to do A, B, C, D, F, G. And then there's some things we'll be like, nope, you can't do that because guess what? It's going to make the anxiety worse. But then he'll tell us to do things that will reduce that anxiety because you learn how to trust him. Just like when you go to your therapist, you learn how to trust your therapist, especially what, what they're telling you is actually working. So that's my thoughts on anxiety concerning that. Is it wrong? No. I always say, what? Trust the process. It's always a process. And sometimes people are not on that path at that moment. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean they're not going to get there. It just means that at this moment, they have not trust the process. And when you don't trust the process, you might prolong okay. that road and you're going to have the keep on having the anxiety. And you may not have anxiety about everything. 
you could just have anxiety about maybe one or two things and then once you but one if you don't sometimes if you don't fix that anxiety you notice how it gets bigger and bigger like a festering mm -hmm, sore mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying when mm -hmm. you don't try if you don't try to work on that or you don't go seek the help whether it be your therapist or you go to god or you do both those are the tools to help people be successful to reduce the anxiety as well as stress because stress is something that's going to happen anyways you know because if you have tasks and you and you you take um pride in your task but you have multiple things that you have to do over and over and over again your stress is going to be your stress so um also can i say one more thing yeah so one please. more thing about the stress part um there are methods of reducing your stress as well and i believe that um sometimes saying the word no when you have too many tasks mm -hmm is important as well because you have to know you literally have to know when to say you know i'm so serious because you are going to go into burnout and the burnout can also lead to the anxiety then you start to dread doing certain things right. then you get nervous all the time then your brain start to go all over the place because you over -ex exerted yourself and sometimes that you cannot so yeah sense. yeah God know how much you can bear, but that stress thing, sometimes you got to say no. Do what God tell you to do, but say no sometimes for, for things that people try to put on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes so much sense. Yeah. And I was curious, too, like for someone who may be watching, who are, they're feeling some of these feelings, but they haven't really, how do you identify that, yeah, that's me, that's what I'm going through, and what are the first steps to, it seems like it's such a long journey to tackle yeah. something like anxiety. So yeah. can you give us a sense of the process, just the starting part of the process? Because I know it's a big topic and we can talk more about it. But what what can we do first to identify this is where I am? I need to fix this because it's unhealthy for me. Uh, first of all, hopefully you don't find out when it's like way too late. Yeah. Um, however, from the beginning, like, you know, with stress, like sometimes you have to learn how to wind yourself down. But you know, when you become overly stressed, and that can happen too. That's what that would lead to the illnesses. That's when you kind of find out a little bit too late that you're too stressed. But I would say, um, stress is something that kind of sneaks up on you sometimes. Sometimes you don't always know it because it happens bit by bit. Um, just like I said with the anxiety, but you can do certain things like, um, like you know, take a walk. You know, and that can, I can't always tell you how you can actually see the stress, mm -hmm. but if you know that you are um, every single day, you're coming home and every single day you're still stressed out about the same thing, that starts to turn into anxiety. So I say when you just see little things like, okay, I am, every, I am always stressed about this. I am always stressed about this. That can be your first, first telltale, okay. Okay. your first telltale. Anxiety, you start to, um, sometimes you just, I don't want to say you have you don't have panic attacks at first. It's more so like you just obsess over the same thing over and over, and it just ah, cannot leave your mind. Okay. That's another thing where you start to notice that oh, I have anxiety, and then over time you'll start to see maybe the physical aspect of it. Like you'll start like just start to shake, or you start having some type of um, I don't know like uh, heartbeats, like mm -hmm, your heartbeat mm -hmm. increases. Like I don't care. Like say if you. You might get anxiety just from being around a person because of something that may have went on between y'all. And so you're like anxiety, okay. like your heart is racist. You start to sweat, you know, and those things start to happen like that. So I guess those are the, the, the smaller telltale signs when you start to notice that that's what you're going through. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what that's one of the main things that I try to focus on is how am I feeling? I guess if that's a way that we can identify stressors before they turn into anxiety. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you hit a key point when you said learning what your boundaries are and being able to say no. Yeah. And, and when some of us are people pleasers. And so mm -hmm. we bring on a lot of stress on right. ourselves by not having that that sense of your your boundaries and being able to say no for sure well again i'm kim charlotte and this is uh, nicole austin we are trying to tackle stress and anxiety in the church we are charting the course join us next time thank you for tuning in today to our charting the course podcast segment we welcome your comments, questions, or any topics you would like to have answers to. Join us next time as we continue to chart the course according to the Word of God.